I'm out of my garage right now because tomorrow is meal prep day. So I wanna shop through my freezer before I go to the grocery store and before I plan what I'm gonna make. So let's take a look at this crowded freezer. And another thing, we are getting a new chest freezer. I think it's coming sometime this week. So we have our upright freezer and we have a chest freezer coming because we have um, that elk meat that from that elk that my husband got. So it's getting packed into sausages and ground elk. And then my brother-in-law got a buck a couple weekends ago. So I don't know, we might get some venison, but we did order a half of a cow. So we need to make room. So I'm gonna clear out some of my freezer and see what I can get rid of and what we can eat up this week. All right, so here's the freezer. It is packed full of stuff, even here too. Don't mind the non-keto food. This is my kids' stuff. Um, they don't eat um, keto with us. I just kind of try and feed them low sugar stuff. But what I knew I had in here that I need to use up is, all right, so sitting here on the floor, this is what I was looking for. We picked these up from Costco a while ago and I want to use them up, but it is a pork loin tip roast. These are really good. I'm gonna roast these on the Traeger and I'm probably gonna use up both of them so they're just done and out of the way and we'll have some leftover meat too after I cook those up. The other thing I was hoping to find in here was some steak, but gosh, we've like really gone through it because this is the only steak I can find. This is a New York um, and one is not gonna be enough, but I did find this. So this looks like it's blank steak um, just by the way it's wrapped. So um, I think I'm gonna take this because I wanna grill this up to have some, um, but I wanna make some French dip sandwiches just because that sounds really good. So um, I'm gonna do that. I'm actually just might grill up that New York too, um, just since it's there and let's just get rid of it because nobody really will just eat one steak. We need at least two steaks to feed us all for one meal. All right, it's the next day and all of the meat that I took out last night has thawed out. I have made up my menu and I'm gonna go grocery shopping. But I'm gonna show you guys what we're gonna have for the week, sort of like roughly of what I'm thinking. Here's the menu for the week. I'm thinking, so it's Monday that I'm filming this. I had to work yesterday, so I didn't get a chance to meal prep. So I'm doing my meal prep day today, which is Monday. So tonight we're having the pork roast. It's gonna take a while to cook, so I'm gonna prep that up first and get that on the Traeger. And then tomorrow, we're gonna have the leftover pork roast and I'm gonna turn it into barbecue pork sandwiches. And I know I spelled sandwiches wrong. Um, I don't know why I always wanna put an extra H in there, it just happens. And then Wednesday, it's gonna be grilled steak. And then Thursday, we'll have friendship sandwiches with the leftover grilled steak. And then Friday is gonna be a flatbread pizza with the, any leftover pork roast that we have. And I'm gonna make that out of, I have those cut the carb wraps. So I'm gonna make that out of that. And then you're probably wondering what I'm gonna use for the buns for the pork sandwiches and the French dip. Um, I'm gonna make my recipe for the keto hamburger buns. So today I'm prepping the pork roast. I'm going to make my keto hamburger buns and then I'm gonna um, slice up some red onion too. And then it's gonna be super easy prep for the week cause like everything else is just kind of piecing it together as, as I go throughout the week for dinner time. So anyway, I'm gonna get to shopping right now, get that out of the way, I have to drop off our voter ballots, and yeah, just easy recipes for the week. Um, and my mom had surgery this week, so um, I just, I've been kind of stressed and had a lot on my plate emotionally, so um, I just want it to be easy and not have to think a lot. All right, I'm back from the grocery store. I'll just kind of show you guys what I got. A lot of stuff I still already had in my pantry or refrigerator, so that's good. I'm saving some money there. Um, I went to Safeway, which is what we have here in town. I just picked up a few items um, that I'm gonna need for meal prep this week. Um, one cool thing that I found was they have the Quest chips. So these are Quest protein chips. And uh, for one bag, there's four net carbs, which, you know, if you're just having this whole thing, it might be a lot. I don't think it is though. It's like, it's worth it if you're craving tortilla chips, but they had like, this is like a Doritos flavor. And then this is like their equivalent of Doritos Cool Ranch. And for our French chip, this is what I picked up for French chip au jus. Um, 
I probably could have made my own, but like I said, I wanted to keep things like super simple this week because it's like my life is already complicated. Um, so this is the one that I like. It's by Johnny's, um, and it's one gram of carb uh, for one and a half tablespoons. So this was actually the lowest carb one I found at the store. It's not clean. Please don't keto. Please don't come after me. Make your own. If you don't want to do this route, um, the amount of carbs that are in here really aren't going to be that significant because this is going to be one serving and it's like a quarter cup of finished sauce. So I bet you that's probably how much I'm going to use when dipping my French dip in. So it's like one gram of carb. So yeah. And then I got provolone cheese for the French chip sandwiches. It just sounded good to be kind of cheesy too. And then a red onion. So this will go on my French chip sandwiches. I won't put it on the kids' because they don't like red onion. I think I'm gonna um, saute these up um, and then have some just sauteed onions on there. And then also for the pulled pork sandwiches. And then like I said, I'm on an easy kick this week. So we're doing frozen veggies. And thankfully, like I mentioned, they're coming out with all these cool keto approved items in your grocery store, including your freezer aisle. So um, this green giant has this rice vegetables. It's um, a medley of cauliflower rice and what's in there, asparagus and mushroom, I think. So um, in one serving, there's two grams of carbs here's a mashed cauliflower and then on that last night I want to have those flatbed bread pizzas so I got some blue cheese um, some green onion and some cilantro to go on top because that's just delicious on top of a barbecue pork pizza um, and I'll probably have like barbecue sauce on there and then a little bit more of that red onion. It's going to be delicious. So anyway, that's pretty much all I got. Just some extra stuff for the kids. And ooh, I wanted to show you guys my barbecue sauce too. All right. So this is the barbecue sauce that we are using today for our, um, not today, but this week for our pulled pork sandwiches. I don't know why I keep on calling them pulled pork. It's not pulled pork. It's just a roasted pork sandwich. And, um, and then also this will go on the pizza too. Um, there's not that much left. It's like a half a cup. Um, but I actually have another bottle in the cupboard. So this is by Lily's Q. They have a, a zero sugar barbecue sauce and the macros, um, it's two grams of carbs per serving, which is two tablespoons. Um, Primal Kitchens also makes a uh, low sugar keto approved barbecue sauce. That's pretty good. This one's my favorite though. Um, I think like, isn't there something called Hughes or Baby Hughes or something like that? B Hughes, or, I'm not quite sure what it is, but they also have a low sugar barbecue sauce too. My grocery store doesn't carry that. They don't carry this one either, but I get this off of Amazon. I'll have it linked down below for you guys. So that's our groceries. We did that. Next up is to get our pork roast ready. So I'm gonna just season the outside of it and then fire up the Traeger, get it smoking, get all that gross smoke off first. And then that's where that's gonna go. I'm following a Traeger recipe on how to roast it. Um, it says it's gonna take six hours. I've done this recipe one time before. It's, it's done sooner in six hours. I think it was like three or four hours. Um, so it's not gonna take that long, it won't take six hours. I'm adapting it to make it more keto friendly because the Traeger's recipe calls for apple juice, which I'm not doing. I'm actually gonna be using apple cider vinegar, which is very tasty on it. Apple cider vinegar is like my mom's kind of secret recipe. She uses it on all of her pork recipes. Like she does a really good holiday ham recipe. It takes a picnic um, ham and she puts apple cider vinegar on it and it's out of this world amazing. It's That's all she seasons it with is apple cider vinegar. It's so good. Anyway, so let's get started on that. The seasoning I'm using today is a Montreal steak seasoning. I'm not too happy about this one. I mean, I like Montreal steak seasoning. It's okay. My husband makes a blend of um, steak seasoning that we use for, it's not just steak seasoning. We use it for everything from steak to chicken to pork. It's really good. It's just like a combination of, I think, garlic salt, pepper, maybe garlic powder, maybe regular salt. I'm not sure, but um, he does his own special blend and it's really good. But I don't have any more of it made up. I used it all last week and um, 
he's working right now, so he can't make me anymore. So I'm using this instead. Um, so hopefully it turns out okay. And then, like I mentioned, I'm using the apple cider vinegar. This is the brand that I normally get and use. It's by Bragg's. It's the one that's um, unfiltered and raw, so it has the mother in it. But when I'm just doing stuff with pork, just like I want that infused vinegar, vinegar flavor, I kind of go for the least expensive option, and that's just this one. So it's still apple cider vinegar, but it's filtered. Does not have, it's not raw, it doesn't have the mother in it. Um, just because I use a larger quantity. So I'm using like around half of a cup and I don't want to waste the good stuff because the good stuff is expensive. So I'm using this instead. So I have that pork roast in the Traeger right now. It's at 180 degrees in there. It'll be there for around an hour and then we're going to increase that temperature to, let me check my notes, uh, 275 and we're gonna cook that for a couple hours uncovered at 275 and then after that we cover it and with aluminum foil and then continue cooking it until the internal temperature gets to 205 degrees so um traeger says that, that takes an additional three hours last time i did this it did not take that long i think because they're smaller portions so anyways while that's roasting we're gonna move on to something else i'm probably gonna maybe slice up my onion um, and then make some hamburger buns. One of my meal prep tips that I usually try and stress is to make sure if you're not making up your meal on meal prep day, is just to make sure you get all of that excess prep work out of the way. So shortcuts that you could do ahead of time. So like prepping up all of your vegetables. And so that's why I'm gonna prep up this onion right now. Um, I just need it in slices because that's why I'm gonna use it throughout the week. So I'm gonna have it on our barbecue pork sandwiches. We're gonna have it on our French chip sandwiches and I'm gonna have it on my flatbread pizza. So I'm just gonna slice this entire thing and then I can pull from it throughout the week as I'm assembling each dinner recipe. All right, so let's collect our thoughts. We are roasting our pork. I have sliced my onion. And the last thing that I wanna to do to prep for the week is to make those keto hamburger buns. So I have this recipe on my website ketofocus.com. I'll have it linked down below for you guys. It's my hamburger bun recipe. It's really easy to make. Everything is add, added to a bowl. You mix it up and you bake them and they fluff up. They look like hamburger buns. They're excellent. So that's what I'm going to make right now. I'm going to double the recipe though, because I want to use them for two meals. I want to use them for our pork sandwiches and I want to use them for our, our French chip sandwiches. So I'm going to double everything that's going to go inside. All right, we're gonna need two cups of almond flour because we're doubling the recipe. Normally it's just one, but we're gonna add in two. And up next, we're gonna need one full cup of unflavored whey protein powder. And this is the brand that I like to use. It's by Perfect Keto. Um, I like their protein powder because it's keto approved, just has minimal ingredients in it. And it has a little bit of MCT powder in there too for some healthy fat. Um, and it tastes great. If you guys are interested, I'll have an affiliate link down below for you guys where you can save on your order. So one cup of protein powder, but you could use whatever whey protein powder you want. Up next, we're going to be adding some psyllium husk. These are the whole psyllium husks, but we're gonna add a quarter cup of that and then a quarter cup of golden flax meal. And since we're doubling this recipe, we're gonna need a tablespoon and a third of baking powder. And I'm just gonna eyeball this cause that's what I do best. And then we're gonna need some xanthan gum. The purpose of xanthan gum is it just provides a little bit extra structure. And let's see, we're gonna need two and a half teaspoons. So let's just use this guy again. Next, we're just gonna mix these all together. Oh, I forgot my salt. Let's go get the salt. It's one teaspoon of salt. Okay, now we're gonna whisk everything together and then add our wet ingredients and we'll be done. All right, for wet ingredients, I'm gonna add in four eggs, uh, but before I do that, I need to add in some butter. So it's gonna be a half of a cup of melted butter. 
and I'm gonna get that going in the microwave. So I got my trusty Kerrygold butter, pop this in here, and we're gonna microwave it. add a little bit of sour cream to my buns just because it just adds really nice flavor gives it more of like a actual bun flavor so it's gonna be a quarter cup of sour cream going in here and then we're gonna mix everything together So what I like to do is just kind of like evenly split up my dough. So I did it in halves and I've done it in quarters. And then it kind of depends on like how big you want your buns. But like I said, I've doubled this. I want to make up eight buns. And it works so much better if you have wet hands. So occasionally I will go and I will spritz my hands with some water, just run them under the sink. And it's easier to handle these. We're putting these on a parchment lined baking tray, but you just want to form them into a bun shape as best you can. And they'll expand when they bake too and rise up. Put the keto hamburger buns into the oven. You put them on a parchment lined baking tray. We're gonna bake them at 400 degrees for around 12 to 13 minutes. It's optional if you wanna to top them with sesame seeds. I do just cause um, it reminds me of a hamburger bun. And these will store in the refrigerator. I've made them before and they've kept for like five days or so. So it'll be fine. We're gonna eat these tomorrow and we're gonna have them on Thursday. So it's only like, what is that? Three days away is the last day we'll have them. So um, they'll, they'll stay fresh. You know when your brain is like not firing on all cylinders? And I was thinking like, okay, I gotta check on that pork roast. And I know earlier I said like 205 degrees and none, nothing about that makes sense. And I'm like, that makes no sense. Like pork is done before then. That's gonna be super dried out. So I went and checked and it was like, it's around like 150, so it's, it's a little done. But that's okay, I'm, it'll still be delicious. Um, but yeah, don't listen to me. And don't listen to Traeger too, because I swear that's what that said. And it's just like, that's not possible. It's gonna be so dry and gross at that temperature. So I must have read it wrong, probably read it wrong. Anyway, so I'm gonna let my pork rest for a little bit and then um, we'll get to slicing it. And so I think we'll have the pork roast for dinner tonight with maybe some mashed cauliflower and maybe a side salad. And then, um, yeah, I'm gonna slice up the rest of it into thin slices for our um, barbecue pork sandwiches. And then also need to save some for Friday for our flatbread pizzas. Tuesday so tonight we are having the barbecue pork sandwiches real easy I'm just gonna use those hamburger buns along with my leftover pork and then add some barbecue sauce make a sandwich out of it super easy keto dinner tonight
right, it is Wednesday night and it's time to cook dinner. So remember from our menu, we're having grilled steak and I had taken out that flank steak and a New York steak and those are completely thawed now. So I'm gonna put them on our Weber grill and we're gonna grill those. That's what we're gonna have for dinner tonight. And then I'm gonna have probably some of those frozen sides I picked up. I'm thinking that medley of cauliflower rice with the asparagus and onion sounds good and maybe some of that cheesy broccoli. It's gonna be super simple. And hopefully we have some leftover steak. I think we should, cause it's a lot. And then we're gonna use that tomorrow when we make our keto French dip sandwiches which I'm super excited about because I've been craving French dip all this week. So finally get to have my treat tomorrow. It's Thursday night and it's the night I've been waiting for all week and that's to make my French dip sandwiches. So I'm gonna pull out the rest of those hamburger buns that we made as well as our leftover flank steak from last night and I'm gonna make some French dip. So I'm gonna add in our French dip sauce and this is going in a saucepan along with the leftover steak. I'm gonna let this cook, let it simmer, get it heated up and I'm gonna move on to my hamburger buns. So I'm just gonna slice these in half and then spread on some butter. I'm gonna to top these with some provolone cheese and put them under the broiler for just a few minutes. And then I'm gonna saute those red onions. And this makes such a delicious, great dinner idea. The whole family's gonna love. You could serve it with a side of salad. Um, honestly, just one of these is gonna fill me up. I might even only eat just a half, um, so. But delicious, I'm so excited to have this because I've been craving it all week. All right, it is Friday, finally, thank goodness. And I am making those flatbed pizzas. So I'm taking that leftover pork that we have because I still have a lot. Um, you know, if you don't even want to keep it in your fridge because usually you wanna keep it for around like three to four, maybe five days, you could freeze it. And so it'll still, after it's cooked, you just um, chop it up and then freeze it and then you can take it out and unthaw it. So anyway, the crust that I'm using for my pizza is flatbread and I'm using the cut the carb wraps. You guys have probably seen these guys on Instagram. They just have um, low carb wraps and they're huge, they're humongous. So I think like an entire wrap is like nine grams of carbs, which seems like a lot, but that's, it's huge. It's a huge rectangle, it's like this big. So um, generally most people just have like maybe half of that. And then I'm gonna lay that down with some um, barbecue sauce and then put my pork on it. We're gonna add some red onions, cilantro, green onion, top it with some blue cheese, some mozzarella cheese, pop it in the oven and it'll be done. Less than probably like 15 minutes to cook this sucker. And that's it you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for sticking around with me as I meal prep and I cook throughout the week. And make sure you subscribe to my channel so you get more recipes and more keto ideas of what to fix. Don't forget to click on this playlist up here to watch all of my What's For Keto Dinner playlist. Mm -hmm.